In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to collect data using the Sony RX02 camera system. To access the control interface for the camera system, we navigate to 169.254.200.200 in a supported web browser, such as Google Chrome, on the computer connected to the network switch. The control interface has two areas, the camera information area and the control area. The first thing we need to do is turn on all of the cameras in our system. To do this, we select all of the cameras in the camera information area and turn them on in the control area. And now that the cameras have been turned on, we'll see a live preview of each camera in the camera information area. Before collecting data, we want to configure the settings of each camera. And to start doing this, we're going to clone the settings from one camera to all of the cameras in the system. So we first need to select a single camera in the camera information area and copy its settings in the control area. Then we need to select all of the cameras in the camera information area and reflect the copied settings to them in the control area. And this can take a while to complete. Now that the settings have all been cloned, we can exit that tool in the control area. And now we're going to change the settings or some of the settings for all of the cameras in the system simultaneously. So making sure that all of the cameras are selected, we're going to first set the shoot mode and make sure it is set to movie program auto. So this will automatically set the shutter speed of each of the cameras. Next, we're going to set the focus mode and make sure it is set to preset focus with near mode off. So this optimizes the focus of the cameras for subjects that are from a meter to infinity away from the cameras. And finally, we want to set the movie file format and recording settings. So the movie file format, we want to be XAVCS HD. And then the record setting, we need to choose our frame rate and data rate. So we're going to select a frame rate of 60 frames per second and a data rate of 50 megabits per second for this example. Now that all of the camera settings have been configured, we need to make sure that the cameras and the video that they record will be synchronized. So to do that, we go to the box tab of the control area and we need to set the video sync signal setting to correspond with the frame rate that we are recording at. So we are recording at 60 frames per second, so we will select a video sync signal setting of 60p, 60i, 30p, um, which is the setting for video recorded at 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. If we we're recording at 24 frames per second, we would choose the 24p setting. But we're recording at 60 frames per second, and we'll use the 60p, 60i, 30p setting. Now, anytime you change the video sync signal setting, or in this case, because it is the first time we've turned the system back on, we're going to reinitialize the control boxes. So this is important to make sure that the videos will all be synchronized. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit initialize, which will initialize all of the control boxes. This will take a while, so you just have to have patience here while the control boxes initialize. Okay, so the control boxes have been reinitialized. Re and although that is a time-consuming process, it only needs to be done, as I said, if you change the video sync signal setting, or as we recommend, 
the first time you turn your system back on. So we can now go back to the camera tab of the control area and we're now almost ready to collect some data. But before we do that, we want to format the memory cards of the cameras in the system. So again, making sure all of the cameras are selected, we're going to hit Format. And the reason we want to do this is to make sure that the video files that each of the cameras record are numbered consistently. So as you collect or record video files, they increase in number sequentially. So we want to make sure that there's no existing video files on any of the cameras that may mess up that numbering scheme so that file one on camera one will always be the same trial as file one on camera two and camera three and camera four, etc. So we're now ready to record some data. So all we have to do is with all of the cameras selected in the control area we're going to hit record. We'll just record a few seconds of data here and when we're done recording what we want to we just hit stop. So um, we've now recorded some data at um, that was recorded at 60 frames per second. So now let's record some data at 120 frames per second at a 100 megabit data rate. So again, because the video sync signal setting does not need to change, um, switching from 60 frames per second to 100 frames per second, we don't need to reinitialize the control boxes. So we can simply hit record and record some more data. We've recorded a few seconds so we can hit stop. And it is critical when you're recording your data that in all of your cameras in the camera information area you see video sync and TC sync. So video sync ensures that the cameras are genlocked and TC sync ensures that the cameras are time synchronized. So if any of your settings prevent that, you won't see video sync or TC sync in one or more of the views. So again, it is critical that your data be both genlocked and time synced um, before it is imported and analyzed by Thea 3D. So let's record one more trial. And now let's record at, uh, let's say, 24 frames per second at 50 megabit per second as our data rate. So because we changed the um, frame rate to 24 frames per second, but our control boxes, the sync video sync signal setting is still set at that 60p, 60i, 30p setting, we no longer have genlock or time code sync and we see that we lost those indicators in the camera information area that told us that our videos and our video data would be synced. So we need to change the video sync signal setting to 24p to match our um, frame rate of our recorded videos and then we want to reinitialize the control boxes because we changed that setting. So again, we'll hit initialize with all of the cameras selected. And this will reinitialize all of the control boxes, which again will take some time. Okay, now that the control boxes have finished reinitializing, um, we see that the video sync signal setting is set to 24p, which matches our video recording frame rate and our video sync and time code sync indicators um, are back for each of our cameras, meaning that our cameras are genlocked and time synced. So we can go back to the camera tab and go ahead and record another short trial.
Okay, now that we've recorded some data, um, it's time to pull that data down off of the cameras and onto the computer. So to do that, in the control area, we're going to go to the import um, line, and we can either import the latest capture from each camera, or we can hit select rather than latest, which takes us to a menu to select uh, multiple trials or all of the trials from each of the cameras. So what we want to do is select all images of all cameras. So this is going to select the three trials we recorded from all four of the cameras. And we want to add the camera label as a prefix to the file name. So the video files on each camera are numbered as C0001, 2, 3, on and on and on. And adding the camera label will add the camera ID um, before that trial number, which is important for being able to identify and label the trials in Thea 3D. So with all images of all cameras selected, prefixing the camera label, we can start the import. So this will take a while to prepare and download all of the videos. Now that the video files have finished downloading, we can close the importing dialog. And if you look in the folder where those videos were downloaded to, you can see that for each camera, you have video files named as the camera ID underscore the trial. So we have three trials for each of our four cameras. Now, before finishing this tutorial, there are a couple other things I would like to point out. The first is that when you change the um, frame rate that you're recording video at. So let's say we change back to 30 frames per second from 20 frames per second and we now lose the video and TC sync indicators and we need to go back and change our video sync signal setting to correspond to our frame rate. You may need to wait for that um, signal to propagate through to the control boxes before reinitializing them, or it may not um, stick after the initialization. So you may need to wait here for a few seconds for the TC and video sync indicators to come back for each of the video views before reinitializing the boxes. So here you can see that change is propagating through, and we're back indicating that um, the videos are or the cameras are gen locked and time synced um, and at least those two views and then you would just wait for that to propagate through to these other two cameras um, which this one is finishing up before initializing the or reinitializing the boxes the second thing to point out is that in addition to changing the um, frame rate and to a frame rate that requires a change in the video sync signal setting, anytime you add or remove a camera from the system, you will also need to reinitialize the control boxes. And in addition, when you add or remove a camera, after adding or removing that camera, you should turn off the control box that is set to be the master and turn it back on and then reinitialize all of the control boxes. And finally, while the RX02 cameras are capable of capturing at frame rates above 120 frames per second, so they can capture at 240, 480, and 960 frames per second, um, while you can record video at those frame rates, you cannot time sync those high frame rate videos. Therefore, um, recording synced video with the RX02 camera system is limited to a maximum of, maximum of 120 frames per second. Um, so with that, that's the end of the tutorial, and you should be able to 
collect video data using the Sony RX02 camera system and you can refer to the formatting data tutorial for information about formatting the videos that are downloaded from the camera system so that they can be imported and analyzed in Thea 3D. And finally, after collecting all of your data, you can, from the camera tab of the control area, with all of the cameras selected, turn them off by putting them on standby. This will shut them down while leaving the control boxes on and allow the batteries in the cameras to charge.